Hello and welcome to this weekend service. I'm Seth Cooley, I'm one of the pastors here, and uh, I'm just down on a walk at the Audubon Trail and happy to be with you. Uh, this weekend is the first weekend of May, and normally we'd take that opportunity to offer you the chance to have some questions answered if you're new and gather together a little bit. So we're gonna do that a little bit differently. We're gonna have a virtual gathering. If you're new to Canyon View, I want you to text new to the number below and you'll get an invitation to just a special time together. And we've got a, a gift for you. And so um, I just like to say, hey, this is gonna be a great weekend. Uh, today's the day to worship God. Our worship team's ready to go. Why don't you join me as we kick off the service with some worship? Well, hello, Katie, if you welcome today. We're glad you're with us. Let's worship today. Lord, we thank you that nothing can separate us from the love of the Father. We sing. You are with me. You never left my side. You call me back, and I trust you with my life. Not my sin, not my past, not my failure Can keep me from the power of your love So what can separate us Separate us from your love What can separate
Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, He is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, He is my song. You are good.
Spirit, we need you in our lives. Not just in our current circumstance, but in every facet of our lives, God. And we need to hold on to the fact that you are good. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us. So may your presence come. We invite you, Lord. Because you are good. your glory, show your goodness here on earth, God, as in heaven, there is power in your presence, so let your kingdom come.
invite your kingdom here today, O oh Lord. To come and have your way. You can have it all, Lord. As we face uncertain times, we can move towards fear, anxiety, hysteria, and even depression. When we read 1 Peter, we see a prescription to the madness that surrounds us. How would Jesus react to our current situation? How would Jesus move through the empty grocery aisles and the unemployment lines? How do we communicate that message to a broken world? Thinking like Jesus leads to living like Jesus, the healing the world is truly looking for. Well, uh, good evening or good morning, Canyon View. It's great to be with you, and uh, we invited you into our house. And if you see here in my left is my lovely wife, Jane. Say hi, Jane. Hi, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> but we thought, uh, as I looked at First Peter 3 and uh, the topic that it's talking about, I thought, man, this would be fun to just invite you into our kitchen and... Um, in a way, invite you into our hearts. And we want to share with you how we've lived out our life together for the past 34, almost 35 years. Is it, did I get that right? You did. Woo good job. So, uh, you know, they say that behind every good person, there's a, a soulmate that's with them. And I, um, the first 28 years of my life, I had my mom influencing me and my dad. But for the past 36 years, uh, now Jane's been involved in my life and speaking into my life, encouraging me and, and kicking me in the butt. And if you see the way this woman can kick, you'd understand that. <laughs> but uh, so um, as we are here, I, it made me think about, and probably ought to start cooking here. I started thinking about when I was single, wow. <laughs> you made that hot. That is hot. We like garlic. We're making fried rice. So um, we thought about the blessing of, with you guys here with us, a guy I met on a wilderness trip, he um, challenged me that he said, do you want to get married? And I said, yes. And he says, well, what, do you, who do you, what kind of woman do you want to marry? And I said, well, she needs to be a Christian. And he stopped me and he says, I want to challenge you. He said to uh, pray about marrying a woman of God and not just a Christian girl. And he said, there's a big difference. And man, when he said that, immediately um, I knew he was right. And so I started praying and just uh, a year later, two years later maybe, this woman walks into my life and I said, that's what I've been praying for. So if, for those of you that are listening uh, or watching, if, if you're single, man, I just encourage you to take that to heart. Just pray about the person you are uh, supposed to marry someday, that that person would be a man of God or a woman of God, depending on which side you're coming from. So anyway, um, be, be think, thinking of that because when you look at the scripture we're going to cover today, you'll see that the, the heart, what comes out of the heart, comes who the person is and what the person does. And so let me, let me read to you the first two verses of 1 Peter 3 says, uh, likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands. Are you listening to this? 
be subject to your husbands, <laughs> so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives when they see your respectful and pure conduct. Now, uh, Jane and I could sit here probably for hours and we could tell you all the ways that I didn't obey the word of the Lord. And Jane, through her godliness and her heart, was used by the Lord and influenced by the Lord to bring me back on the right path. Jane's steady and she gets set on a course and she doesn't waver. She's an uh, amazing woman of God. And uh, for those of you who know her, you know that I'm not blowing smoke. It, this is an amazing woman right here. But uh, Jane has uh, won me over and over, but this topic of being subject to, this, I know this goes totally against the grain of our society. And uh, the Amplified Version, I love what, how it describes being subject to, and other people will say submit to. It says subordinate, not as inferior. That, this is really critical. Subordinate, but not as inferior. But out of respect for the responsibilities entrusted to husbands and their accountability to God. And so partnering with them. So Jane really has been my partner for the past 35 years together. And uh, her handprints are on everything that I've done. And every ministry I've been involved in, her handprints are really on that. So um, Jane, I, I know that um, this issue of being submissive, subject to, can be really difficult for many women. How would you describe how how you see that and how you've lived that out? Well, it's not always been easy. I, um, I'm i actually kind of a type A controlling person. Well, not kind of, right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so it's actually been kind of hard. And what I've learned is to um, keep my mouth shut a little bit more and to not necessarily say the first thing that comes out of my mouth. And am I doing any better at that, do you think? Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. awesome. <laughs> But um, I think what I found is that the more I do that, it just allows me to think first before I speak. And the more I do that, I find that um, I'm really honoring Kirk in his decisions or in his authority or whatever he might be having to say, like when he, we're, we're driving and I think we need to go one way and he thinks we need to go another way. You know, I used to be not very good about that and just speak my mind and now I just kind of close my mouth. And I think that makes him feel more honored and I think as he feels more honored and respected, then I feel more blessed, and then I in turn want to honor and bless him more. So that's just a, a simple way that I've learned over the years. But it's a, it's a journey and it's a process that I'm still learning. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick my neck on the line here. In verse seven it says, likewise husbands, live with your wives in understanding ways, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers not be hindered. So if I have ever done that, if you've ever felt honored, or if you've ever been um, treated with honor and respect, how does that make you feel? And um, how does that influence our relationship together? Well, I think in a number of ways, <clears throat> I feel honored. I think when, when Kirk honors and affirms me in public, and he does a really good job at that up front, and he's, um, he's good at um, just you know, acknowledging the things that he feels like I do well and my gifts. And the other thing that really means probably the most to me is when he um, affirms me as a wife and a mom and a grandma. And I know the other day we were just talking about young people and how hard it is for... Um, for young, young moms, you know, today raising kids. And, and he really, you know, he just made a point. He said, you were really were a great mom to our four kids. And just, just even in that statement, that really affirms me. So I do feel honored by you. Thank you. Good. <laughs> so, <laughs> you yeah, want to do this now? we'll let you take over. <laughs> so this, this is uh, another issue that I think in our culture is, um, Countercultural. What Peter now says in uh, chapter 3, starting in verse 3, 
Again, speaking to women, he says, do not let your adorning be external. The braiding of hair and putting on of gold jewelry are the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. So again, this is something that goes totally against our culture. And uh, I looked this up, that there is a $16.5 billion industry in the United States. Do you know what that is? Plastic surgery. I should have been a plastic surgeon. <laughs> yeah, then I wouldn't have all these wrinkles, right? <laughs> Women on the average spend $168 a month on clothes. And then this is another interesting statistic that in a woman's lifetime, on the average, will spend $300,000 on cosmetics. Mm. Isn't that Holy crazy? <laughs> I don't think I've done that. But I, I don't want to just throw women under the bus. An uh, interesting statistic I found on men is on the average, men will spend 5.7 hours a day on sports and leisure. That's crazy, isn't it? So anyway, Peter here is focusing on where a woman's true beauty comes from. And Jane, how do you um, see the way women should adorn themselves or how beauty can come out of uh, a woman, the true beauty? Well, actually, as I get older, this actually becomes a little more difficult to be really honest that I do really pretty good until I look in the mirror, and um, <laughs> but but all I, of us, yeah. But you know, and I've also raised two really girly girls. Oh my gosh! And um, <laughs> so you know, Gracie's all about makeup and hair and jewelry and clothes, and that's just really not me. I'm pretty simple with that kind of stuff, and so it's been a challenge for me. But I think I found over the years that you know I like looking good, and I get my hair cut or colored or something, but. I've also found that really what really makes me feel the most beautiful is when I, um, I really can work on my inner beauty and when I spend time with the Lord and I find that He's really giving me, you know, wisdom and He's giving me, um, you know, all the, the blessings that the Lord gives us when we just get to know Him. And I think by doing that, I really find that that's where I, I think I find the most beauty and that um, over the years, find that the wisdom that, that God has given me, just because I've lived a long time, that um, that can be just as beautiful as um, our outward beauty. Okay, so let me let me ask you a little more specific, uh, an issue in our culture today, um, in particular with women, is the issue of modesty mm -hmm. and how a woman dresses and how revealing her dressing is and so forth. In our culture today, we have a very sexualized culture, right? Mm -hmm. And so for even Christian women, it can feel very normal to uh, dress in a revealing kind of a way. What, what would you say from a woman's perspective of uh, how a woman should think about that? Yeah, well, that's still something we're, we're working on with our 14 year old, that um, trying to help her to understand that. and. Um, I think that, especially for young women, I think a lot of times young women don't realize that the way they dress is really attracting the wrong kind of, of men to them, and they're being attracted to the wrong kinds of things. And I would just encourage women, especially the younger women, to realize that um, if you want to really attract a godly man, then I think we, we need to think about what is on the inside of us more than on the outside, and not to be having men attracted to the wrong things. So just to be really careful about that and continue to, to teach and train our, our, young, our young girls. And I think even as older women, we need to be watchful of that. So the, the basic principle is a woman can look lovely, but doesn't have to be revealing. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a great principle. Yeah. Okay, so now Peter in verse eight, he goes on and talks about the, the power of being a people of blessing. So consider that as I read these next two verses. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, 
a tender heart and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless, for this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. So what, what Peter is uh, talking about here is basically the principle that what's in our heart is what comes out. What's in our heart reflects on what we say and what we do. Jesus talked about this very thing in Matthew 15, verse 18, where he said, but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. And this defiles a person. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. So how, how we think, I already put that on. Oh, whoops. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we get double this. How we think <laughs> affects what we do. And, uh, but what's in our heart is really important for us to understand because this isn't about ex management of external behavior. So I can't be uh, a man of blessing to Jane and to our family if I'm not receiving blessing from something beyond myself in my heart. And so as I feed my heart with blessings, then what happens is those blessings overflow into other people's lives. So um, Jane, con considering that, how do you see or how do you put yourself in an environment on a regular basis that you're receiving blessing in your heart? Well, I think the first thing that I try to do and I've tried to, um, do this for many years. I grew up in a Christian home, and so I, um, I learned the principle of spending time with Jesus from early on. So probably for 45 years or so, um, and it's not always been easy, but just trying to take some time first thing in the morning to spend time with Jesus and um, get to know him. And ultimately we want Jesus' behaviors to come out of us. And the only way we can really do that is to spend time with, with Jesus and get to know him. So I think I find that when I do that, behaviors become more what I'd like and when I don't do that it's just the opposite and I'm cranky and irritable and I think most people that's happened me, once yeah right <laughs> <laughs> most people can tell that that's happened and it's really true and it's a discipline that it doesn't get easier you know now that I'm almost 60 it's not like it's become this thing that is really easy to do it continues to be a challenge and a discipline that we have to work on so you've also uh, in your ministry have been working with uh, woven families in ministry to fam families of adoption and families of foster kids um, how have you uh, some practical things you've done during the shelter in place to be a blessing to those families well we've been in a place where a lot of these families are where we're raising um, adopted kids some of them that can be difficult and so i think i have a lot of empathy and we both do for families that have challenging kids and you know, now these, these families are, they're having to be teacher, coach, parent, disciplinarian, encourager, all in one package all the time, and they don't get a break. And so I, we just felt like as a team, we wanted to bless these, these families. And so we've done a number of different things. We've brought over little gift bags with crafts in them for the kids, Chick-fil-A gift cards. We've tried to um, do some things, bring, bring meals. We've, what else have we done? We've, um, brought toilet paper over there, and we've, we've tried to pray with them. Of course, six feet apart, you know, it's hard not to hug the mom when she's crying, when you walk to her door, and she's struggling. She's got five kids that she's trying to homeschool. A couple of them are really difficult, and so we've just done what we can to really bless these families. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, Galatians 6, 7, the Apostle Paul uh, talks about this, um, the re issue of, what happens when we bless others? It says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that he will also reap. So uh, there, there is the reality that how we live comes back to us. So if we choose to be a people of blessing, inherently, God blesses us back. And um, one of the things that we have come to understand, and, and Jane uh, has talked about this, is to be a people of blessing, 
we have to receive that blessing from God. And in 1 Peter 3.18, he said, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteousness for the unrighteous, that he might bring to God, bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. So we need to be continually made alive in the spirit because in this broken and fallen world and the, the conflict of this tension between the here and the not yet, our soul gets attacked and our soul gets depleted and we have to continually feed it. We have to continually receive God's blessings in our hearts. And that's what enables us to be a people of blessing. And so we want to bless you as, as you're watching this video and uh, as you're in your home or wherever you are in your car, um, I would just ask you to be in a, a, a spirit of receptivity to the Holy Spirit bringing blessing into your heart right now. If you don't know Jesus and you haven't been following him, this would be a wonderful time for you to receive the invitation from God to receive Christ into your heart right now and just say, Jesus, I've been living without you. Come and fill me. So I'm going to ask Jane to pray a blessing over you right now. All right. So Lord, we just ask that you would bless all those that are watching today, those that are near and far, those that... Um, have been part of our church, those that are not part of this church, those that know you and those that don't. We just ask in the name of Jesus that you would bless them, that you would pour out your favor and your grace on them, and that you would, especially during this time, Lord, would you just be really near to people? Let them know that you love them and care for them. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. And so as Jane prayed that, I, I just pray that you continue to receive, be in a, a spirit, an attitude of receiving of his blessing as we go into this worship song.
Thank you, Tim and worship team for uh, that song. What a wonderful thing to receive God's blessing, isn't it? And I continue to pray the Holy Spirit would be blessing you so that you can bless others during this shelter in place um, or safer in place, whatever it's <laughs> called right now. But um, if you uh, did pray and ask Jesus into your heart, I wanted to give you an invitation because we would love to partner with you. Is uh, the same number that uh, Seth talked about of texting if you wanna come to First Sunday, just text to that same number that you'll see right here and then text Jesus. And we would love to get back with you and encourage you and give you some tools to help you to grow more in your new life in Christ because we, we need to be encouraged and we need to be uh, assisted to, for someone to walk alongside of us in this new journey. So um, we've also witnessed wonderful things uh, during this shelter in place and we wanna thank you for those of you that have continued to be incredibly faithful and generous. And so we wanna to continue to uh, thank you for being such a giving church. And you can give online. If you haven't started yet, you can send check to our address on our website, or you can text at this number for your uh, giving by text. I, I still don't understand how that happens. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Anne and Omar are a wonderful couple in our church and uh, on our food giveaway, uh, last Sunday, she woke up and woke up that morning and God put a specific name of a neighborhood on her mind. 
And so they went and were in line in their car to get the box. And they were given a box and they were given an address. And lo and behold, it was in that neighborhood. So Anne knew that God was up to something. So they went to this house and a woman and a man were there. And um, Anne just told her what had happened. And she said, God knows your address. Really blessed this woman. And they were able to love on them and, and pray over them. That's the power of the kingdom of God working when we partner with him with the heart right here of wanting to be a blessing to our community. God blessed Ann and Omar in return. Thank you guys for being such a giving church, for being a people of blessing, and may we continue to be a people of blessing. And I pray, whoops, I pray that God would bestow and overflow and overpower you with his blessings in return. Have a great week.